what do you need to do in order to have a successful application process? Why should you make sure that even with timing, you don't rush the process, you take your time, and you make sure you have the strongest applications? For those of you who are new, my name is Sydney Montgomery. I'm the CEO of S. Montgomery Admissions Consulting, where I specialize in working with first-generation and minority law school applicants. And today, we're talking about not rushing the application process. There are so many students that are, understandably, feeling stressed right now. Um, I feel it from my high school kids hitting their college applications. I feel it from my law school students. And I think there's this this mindset, you know, today I really want to talk about mindset. I think that there's this mindset of scarcity, that you have to rush because you're running out of time, that you don't have time to really put forth effort into your applications because the only thing that matters is how soon you get your applications in. And that's just not true, right? Um, there are a lot of students that have come to me in the last couple of weeks and they're, they're really looking for a rush turnaround, right? They, they want to get their essays in quickly. And sometimes that makes sense, depending on what your goals are. I know that there are early decision deadlines, early action deadlines, scholarship deadlines. But there are times when, yeah, you might get a little bit of a bump from doing some of that early action, early decision stuff. But if the essays that you're putting forth aren't very good, if they aren't a good reflection of who you are, that's not going to help you very much. I want to talk to you about how we can reframe our mindset around uh, the work that we're putting forth in the applications, but then I also want to talk to you about making an actionable plan. So we're going to talk about making a plan if you haven't started any of your essays yet, but you want to apply to law school this cycle. If you've studied your personal statement, but nothing else, and your personal statement's not even finished, that's okay. There's no judgment here. This is a judge-free zone. And also how you can prioritize your applications based on your school list, which is something that I think students also don't really fully put forth. So let's start with mindset, though. Your applications are an important part of your law school journey. It's so important that you focus on the written parts of your application because Otherwise, you're telling me that you're relying on basically your scores or your GPA to get you into law school. And for some of you, your scores and your GPA are not going to get you uh, through the door. That's not going to be the thing that is your ticket because you might be applying with scores or GPA that are below the median. Um, and I know that we're all waiting for November LSAT scores to come out. And for some of you, that's really what you're banking on. But when you put that much weight and you put all of your kind of reliance on things that are not 100% in your control. Your GPA, for the most part, is what it is at this point, right? You cannot change that. And your LSAT score, it's never a guarantee. Uh, yes, of course, you can study, you can take steps to getting, you know, in a certain score range, but sometimes things happen. And when you put all of that energy and effort into things that you don't actually have 100% control over, that's when the stress and the anxiety really starts to build. Because then you feel like you don't have any control over your law school application process anymore. And that is not a great place to be. Because when you feel like you're out of control, when you feel like you don't have enough time, when you feel like you don't have enough uh, resources, then you start making poor decisions. And the other things that I always tell my students are we don't make long term decisions based on short term emotions. But when you're in a place of feeling scarcity, feeling lack, feeling pressure, feeling like you're running out of time, feeling like you're behind, feeling like you, you know, should have done this last month and you're mad at yourself for not doing it and you're mad at your kids for not being quiet when you ask them to be and you're mad at your husband for not doing more of the dishes so you can study for the LSAT and you're mad at yourself for not getting the LSAT score that you wanted. Like all of those feelings do not produce a strong law school application. They just don't. You can't come from this place of stress, of anxiety, of defeat. Some of you are feeling like you're, you're failing, right? Like you're already defeated. You cannot come from that place and write strong essays that showcase who you authentically are. 
You cannot come from that place and show up and make great uh, connections with admissions at forums. You're probably honestly too tired to even go to the forums and to go to the admissions events and to do the information sessions and to take the time to really get to know the schools and talk to current students. You might not be feeling like you have the bandwidth for that if your mindset is stuck in a place of, I'm already behind, I have too much to do, I can't do this, there's no time. That is counter to your goals. So here are some things that we can first do to deconstruct that. You have enough time. So say that with me. I have enough time. I have enough time to turn in my law school applications. I'm not behind. I will apply exactly when I'm supposed to, and it will be with God's divine timing. Now, I'm not saying to say that sentence and then apply in March. No, no. God did not tell you to do that. <laughs> but, you know, right now, it's the week before Thanksgiving. No one is too late to apply to law school right now. That's a lie. That's a myth. It is absolutely still perfectly in good timing. Applying in December, it's okay. Are you early in the cycle? No. But since when does not being early automatically mean that you're late? Now, I will tell you that I am a person that runs habitually late. Honestly, you probably know this from my lives. I read somewhere that people that are habitually late are actually optimists because they're just very optimistic about what they think that they can do with their time. They're like, oh, I've got 10 minutes. I can do these 12 things. I catch myself all the time being like, yeah, I have time to do that. And like, wow, there's only two minutes left. I only did one of the three things that I needed to do in this 10 minutes, right? Like, that's me. Um, I just am not like a person that's usually very early, except in application processes and, and admissions and um, helping to create other people's plans. Sometimes it's easier to show up for others than it is to show up for ourselves. I don't know how many of you feel that way, but I am really good at helping other people be on time. I am not so great at helping myself be on time. But for 2022, that is actually one of the things that I really want to work on is just punctuality. Um, but I say all this to say that there aren't these like two black and white early late. Like there's lots of people who are just on time. They're just they're just regular. And that's okay. It's okay to be on time. It's okay to be regular. Do you get slightly more advantages? Uh, certainly from some schools, maybe not all schools, but certainly from some schools, if you apply early, is it easier, especially if you're below the medians and GPA and LSAT? Absolutely. Absolutely. If you can, you should apply early. If you can, you should apply in September or October or November, before Thanksgiving, right? But if you can't, that's okay too. Both of my students last year who got into Harvard Law School applied after Thanksgiving. One of them applied after January. They're doing all right right now. There are lots of students who get into all of the T14 schools who apply after Thanksgiving. I like to mitigate risk. So I like to advise students on the path that leads to the largest uh, percentage or chance of success, right? This, you, have, you have a higher chance of reaching your goals if you do this. But that doesn't mean that you won't reach your goals if you do this thing over here, right? Which is, again, applying on time. And it is always better to apply a little bit later with a stronger application than to apply early with a rushed unprepared, subpar application. I would much rather you wait and apply with the best essays, with the best uh, letters of recommendation, with the best LSAT score, and know that you're putting your strong foot forward, your best foot forward, than for you to say, but I needed to hit submit in September, and yeah, I don't know, I didn't do these supplemental essays, I kind of rushed through this diversity statement, I don't know if my personal statement made sense, but I submitted it. What good is that going to do? Okay, like, if you submit a weak application early, it's still a weak application, and you will still get denied. I'm just going to keep it real for you guys, right? I think some of you have internalized part of the message, but not the whole message. You hear, apply early but you don't hear with a strong application. 
Otherwise, if you had to choose applying early or strong application, apply with a strong application because otherwise you just won't get denied early. Okay, you apply early week, you could get denied early week. Applying early does not mean you get in. You still have to do the work. You still have to put in the application, right? That's important. And I think people miss that. So you need to reframe your mindset and think about you are applying to law school. You're applying to be a lawyer. Like that's a whole career shift. It's worth taking the time to write good essays. Okay. It's worth making sure that you can get into the best schools that you can because you have the strongest application package. This is your whole life we're talking about, right? This is your career. This is the next 20, 30 years. This is the alumni network you're going to have for life. And you're telling me that you can't spend a month making sure that you have strong essays? Why are we rushing this? Why are we doing this? This doesn't make sense, right? This is not a race. We're not just throwing things in there. We're actually preparing ourselves for our future. We're building generational wealth. We're changing our lives. We're impacting communities. We're writing good essays. Okay? So that's that's the big thing. Now, if you're coming to me and you're saying, okay, but it is November 19th. I haven't started any of my essays. How am I going to apply to law school? Well, a month from now is December 19th. You have at least a month, right? In fact, there's a month and a half until the end of the year. There are many ways that you can get this done. Now, I usually say that it takes about three, at least three drafts of each essay to make it good. And that's if you're starting strong. So if you haven't started any of your essays, make sure you're starting strong, okay? If you look in the links below, I have a free guide to planning and perfecting your personal statement and a free guide to brainstorming your diversity statement with free tips on what makes those things um, strong, how you can think about your personal statement and what it's trying to convey and the purpose behind it and the purpose behind the diversity statement. Because if you don't understand the difference between those two, you're not going to maximize your essays. All right. Um, So if nothing else, go to the links below, get those free guides. I also have an entire free guide on applying to law school. That includes how to write the addenda, how to get your letters of recommendation, your resume, um, all of this stuff that you guys are asking. Look, look at samples, get quality advice, and make sure that you're not just shooting in the dark. What you don't have time to do is waste time. You don't have time to spin in circles and brainstorm for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks. And, weeks, and at the end of the year, you still have written nothing. We don't have time for that anymore. All right, so I want you to get your brainstorming situation together. I advise my students that the most efficient way is to do one very large brainstorm. That's one of the things that I talk about in my personal statement course. In that personal statement course, yeah, it's a personal statement course, but it's really also going to give you the brainstorming tools for every single one of your essays. Plus, if y'all are smart and you're peeping me, You get the personal statement course, you get the free guide that talks about every other part of your application, you get the free guide to downloading your diversity statement. Y'all are about to be set. Honestly, if you just watch a lot of YouTube videos, y'all are about to be set, all right? Uh, I'm here every Friday answering your questions. There's no reason why any of you should feel like you don't have guidance at this point. Even if you don't have any dollars, we have lots of free guidance for you. So I advise my students to do a very large brainstorm, okay? And that brainstorm is not necessarily, okay, what do law school admissions want to want to hear? Or like, this is why I went over law school, so I'm going to brainstorm all these stories. No. I actually, it's going to sound counterintuitive, but I actually believe that you should do a very uh, broad brainstorm of all the significant moments in your life. Um, the moments that have shaped you, the moments that have pushed you, have challenged you, have excited you, your accomplishments, as well as your obstacles. Don't get stuck in obstacle land. Your accomplishments, as well as your obstacles. In both the personal and professional. Now, hear me. Your personal statement needs to have personal stories, okay? Because it's a personal statement. It's not like a a work statement or a a career statement, right? It's a personal statement. There should be personal stories in there. Um, One of the great things that I love doing with students, I got to do this actually twice yesterday. It was, you know, I, I love doing these strategy calls. I do a lot of hourly consulting at this time of year. And I love helping people bridge their backgrounds 
and their professional goals because usually there are stories that intersect, right? Uh, there's ways that you might look at them and be like, well, these don't have anything to do with each other. My favorite thing is to find the connection, to find the bridge because you're one person and all of our experiences, they stack, right? So you didn't just experience all these different things without some of the experiences influencing how you viewed other experiences, influencing what you want to do and your passions. They're connected. Your job in the personal statement is to connect them, okay? Um, so while you may feel like you have a lot of disparate experiences, I bet you there is a way that you can connect them. But when you start brainstorming, I don't want you to think about law school. I don't want you to think about law school admissions. I want you to spend time really brainstorming, again, all of the significant moments in your life, personal, professional, failures, accomplishments, impacts. Some of it can relate to the law, yes. Some of it can be miscellaneous, other. I have a template for you that helps you in that course. Um, if you purchase any hourly consulting, you get those brainstorming and out, um, outlining documents for free. But you need to do that brainstorm. And this is why it's important to do a broad brainstorm. Because from that, you're going to choose the stories in your personal statement. But you're going to come back to the same document to choose stories for your diversity statement. You're going to come back to the same document to choose stories for your YS essays, for your supplemental essays, for your scholarship essays. Look at this. You don't only have to brainstorm anymore. You brainstorm one time. And when you do a broad brainstorm like this, it also ensures that you have thought through what stories go where. Instead of what most people do is they brainstorm their personal statement like this. And then they go, okay, diversity statement time. Darn, I already talked about that. I don't know. Well, what else can I brainstorm? And then we get to the supplemental essays and you're like, I am just very tired of thinking of stories. I don't know what other stories I can think of. Right, And you're running out of steam because when you're weary, you don't brainstorm good stories. But it's really awkward when you get to your diversity statement and realize that two of the stories in your personal statement probably would be better in a diversity statement, but you feel like you've already finished and perfected your personal statement, so you don't want to change it at this point. And do you see the, the backwardsness right? that's happening? This does not make sense. This is inefficient. We're trying to make a plan to get your applications in by the end of the year. We don't have time to waste time. Do a large brainstorm. It should take you a couple days, maybe a week. You've got that. Listen, turkey day is coming. You've got a little respite. All right. So just think about that brainstorm. And then from there, choose the stories. Allocate them. You know, like you go in this bucket, you go in that bucket. Right. I want you to be put, assigning stories to different essays. When you get to the stories, you need to then order them so that they become one story. Outline, I speak a lot about outlining in my free guide. Structure, I get so many essays that come to me that have no structure. And I'm like reading them, I'm like, where are we going? Like what, where are we going? And then like there's a paragraph that is just about something random. And I'm like, how does this relate to anything? And I'm like, I don't know, it doesn't, it's kinda, here's another experience. No, 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 no. You need to have structure with your essays. You have to outline. Okay, I teach in my free guide how to outline with complete sentences with transitions so that you can be sure that your essay actually has structure because it is so much harder to edit an essay that's unstructured. We're trying to be efficient. And then once you have your outline, your essay writes itself with narrative voice, with imagery, with stories, right? Moving from stories to stories and show and don't tell. These are things I talk about a lot, guys. If you haven't started any of your essays, you're gonna take a week to brainstorm. Then you're gonna get that outline done, let's call it two days. And then I want you writing a draft at least every three days, okay? Get someone to review it. Whether it's our company, whether it's your mom, whether it's your husband or your wife, whether it's your grandmother, I don't care. Um, get somebody to review your draft. But listen carefully, when you get people to review your draft, I want you to pick one person, maybe two people. That's who's reviewing your draft. A lot of times people waste time because they're getting 10 different opinions and 10 different people are gonna say 10 different things about your essay and now you're all kinds of confused. You just need to say, okay, you 
you are reviewing my draft. Like, mom, you've got it. You're you're tapped in. All right. Teamwork makes the dream work. I'm gonna send my essays to you. You gonna send my essays back. I'm gonna send it to you. You gonna send it back. And I'm going to trust in your advice. Now, if your mom does not like to write, mom is not a good choice. Maybe it's dad. Maybe it's a teacher. Maybe it's a pre-law advisor. I don't know who it is, but pick carefully, pick wisely, and then stick to them. Because you don't have time to waste. What did I say? We don't have time to waste time. All right? And wasting time looks like getting 10 different people to edit your essays, each draft. Right? That doesn't make sense. All right? So you want to be turning in those essays to that person every three days or so, every four days. If you've done that, right? And you should be able to outline your personal statement. You should be able to outline your diversity statement and you should pull up your applications. Uh, look to see what different supplemental essays you have. Write them down, make a plan, and then outline those. You should be able to finish your applications without rushing while still going through the steps by the end of the year if you follow that. Now, if you studied your personal statement, yep, you're already ahead. Right. Again, pick that one or two people that are going to really, you know, be there for you in the essay editing process um, and make sure that you set a timeline with them. Get an accountability partner. That's really important that someone is holding you accountable. Like put on your calendar the days that you want my first draft due, my second draft done, my third draft done, my final draft done. If you budget even four drafts, three to four drafts, right, you might not need that. But if you budget four drafts on your calendar, then you can start saying, okay, so then when am I going to do that? I want you to block time on your calendar. You will need to block, if you block an hour a day, you can get all of these done without rushing. Just one hour a day. You can do so much. Now, I also wanted to talk to you a little bit about prioritizing your applications because you don't have to turn in all of your law school applications the same day. Um, you have the flexibility, obviously, to turn in some applications before others. So open up all of your schools. You know, I love spreadsheets. We use a lot of spreadsheets here. Whatever you have at your disposal, open up your school list and look to see what schools have supplemental essays. Some of them, honestly, probably the majority of them don't. The majority of them probably have a personal statement and a diversity statement. Okay, great. You know then that as soon as you're done with those two, that school can go. Now, there are some schools that it does not matter as much if you apply in January. And there are some schools, especially the highly selective schools, that like, yeah, you want to try to get your applications in by the end of the year if you can. It might make a difference, right? Especially, like I said, if you're someone that's applying with a GPA or an LSAT below the median. So you need to figure out which of my schools does it make sense that I need to apply to? Which schools fill their class? Like Howard last year filled their class, I mean, by February, they were basically full, right? Um, so you need to figure out, okay, which of my schools do I really need to apply to first? And which of my schools, because of the selectivity, because of when they normally receive um, a bulk of their applications because of how they read. I know that I can apply to two last. One of the things that I try to have my students do, though, also is to pick at least one or two schools that you can apply to right now. There are at least one or two schools where, you know, if you've already taken an LSAT exam, your LSAT is at or above median, your GPA is at or above median. I think it's actually just really confidence building in this process for you to have that early win. Maybe by the end of the month, well, you finish your essays, right? But put in at least one application early so you can get that early win. Because that way you're going into it and you're working on the rest of your supplemental essays knowing that you're going to law school somewhere. One of my students just got a full ride plus stipend at a school that is definitely his safety school. But like I told him, worst case scenario, you're going to law school for free, right? Like that's not a bad worst case scenario. If nothing else goes right this application season, which it will, but if nothing else goes right this season, you're going to law school for free. You're actually getting paid to go to law school because they're giving you a stipend. Do you know how gratifying it is to just have that? It goes back to what I said at the beginning about mindset, right? You write better essays when you're in an abundance mindset. And if you can give yourself an early win, 
and you can, you know, get that full ride or, or that half tuition scholarship. And you can just have that in your hand and just know, okay, I got this. I am boss. And I know that I'm going to write these essays, but no matter what, worst case scenario, I'm already in law school, I'm going to be a lawyer, and I can afford to go. So I'm a big fan of giving you like yourself an early win. I think that's just like a really great thing to do. So pick one school on your list that's like really not hard. Like, listen, like you could probably get into it like in your sleep. Just pick one. It should be a school that will still have good employment rate and good bar passage rate. But pick that one school, figure out like, boom, let's get that sent in. Um, and then as you're working on the rest of your applications, it will give you that confidence, that abundance mindset that will allow you to think creatively, that will allow you to uh, not have writer's block or, you know, some people say they're like hitting a wall. You need space. You need space to do good writing. You need an abundance mindset to do good writing. You need calm to do good writing, right? And I want that for you because this is such um, a celebration, right? This moment of applying to law school, you are your ancestors' wildest dreams. And sometimes it doesn't feel like that because we're just grinding, but like, you're applying to law school. Like some people couldn't even go to school, you know, like you are your ancestors' wildest dreams. And I want you to have joy in this process. I want you to have abundance in this process. I want you to have peace and confidence in this process because you're doing the damn thing. You're killing it. All right, you are setting yourself up for such great success in the future. I am so excited and proud of you. Like, ah, I'd be like running around like, yes. Like we celebrate submissions over here. Like you did that, you know, like no matter what else happens, I'm already proud of you. I'm not proud of you because of the prestige, because of the degree, because of the scholarship. Like I'm proud of you for that too, but like that's not it. I'm proud of you because of the work that you're putting in right now. I'm proud of you because you're showing up for yourself every day. I'm proud of you because you're not giving up on yourself. I'm proud of you because you're putting yourself out there. And that takes courage and bravery. Like celebrate that, you know, like take time to really think about like, what am I doing right now? Like, wow. Like, wow. Like, look at me go. Yeah, some of y'all don't celebrate each other enough, right? Or celebrate yourself enough. Like, I did that. I hit submit. I did that. Like, I am so proud of you. And that's why I want you to have this abundance mindset. I don't want you to rush. I don't want you to throw this moment away. I don't want you to just, you know, put out something that's so hard because you've worked so hard for this moment. For this moment of hitting submit, you have worked so hard. And I want you to be able to reap all the benefits of that and all the rewards and bask in how awesome you are. So guys, just know that I am praying for you always. I'm rooting for you. And I know that you can produce fantastic pieces of writing. I know that you can absolutely have a strong application this cycle. I believe in you. I believe in your law school dreams. And I cannot wait to see how it comes to fruition. If you need anything, please don't hesitate to reach out. Like I said, we are closed uh, Tuesday through the 29th, so I'll be back on the 30th. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me. As always, make sure you share this video with a friend if it was helpful. Make sure you like and subscribe, rate and review the podcast, and I will see you guys after the holidays. Happy Thanksgiving. Bye.